Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise biology topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. This video summarizes part 3 of topic 6, Plant Nutrition. This is the final video of this chapter. Please do refer to the playlist for the previous two parts. Let's observe the effect of light and dark conditions on gas exchange in a plant. So plants respire in the light and in the dark. Therefore, plant cells take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide at all times. During daylight, plants photosynthesize, taking in carbon dioxide and producing oxygen as a waste product. At night, plants do not photosynthesize, but they continue to respire. So they take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. During the day, especially when the sun is bright and the light intensity is high, plants photosynthesize at a faster rate than they are respiring. So overall, there is a higher intake of carbon dioxide and a higher output of oxygen. If the light is bright enough, the rate of carbon dioxide absorption becomes greater than the rate of carbon dioxide release. So as you can see, during the day, even though both photosynthesis and respiration are happening, there is a net intake of carbon dioxide and a net output of oxygen. And during the night, the plants take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. We can investigate the effect of light on the net gas exchange in an aquatic plant using a hydrogen carbonate indicator. A hydrogen carbonate indicator is used to show carbon dioxide concentration in solution. The table shows the colors that the indicator turns at different levels of carbon dioxide concentration. So it turns yellow in high concentrations of carbon dioxide. The indicator turns red when it's in equilibrium with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And it turns purple in low concentrations of carbon dioxide. Several leaves from the same plant are placed in stoppered boiling tubes containing some hydrogen carbonate indicator. The effect of light can then be investigated over a period of a few hours. Results from a typical experiment are shown in the table below. So when the leaf is exposed to light, the indicator turns purple, meaning the overall absorption of carbon dioxide by the leaf is high. When the leaf is in dark conditions, the indicator turns yellow meaning the overall release of carbon dioxide from the leaf is high. In the absence of a leaf, the indicator is red, meaning the carbon dioxide level is the same as that of the atmosphere. Let's learn about limiting factors now. A limiting factor is something present in the environment in such short supply that it restricts life processes. Limiting factors of photosynthesis are temperature, light intensity, and carbon dioxide concentration. Now let's look into the details of the structure of a leaf. Most leaves have a large surface area and are thin. These features are adaptations for photosynthesis. So a large surface area means that it helps to allow more diffusion of carbon dioxide and more absorption of light for photosynthesis. The fact that it's thin allows faster diffusion of carbon dioxide to palisade mesophyll cells. This is the cross section of a leaf and these are the parts that you will be expected to identify in the leaf of a dicotyledonous plant. So at the top we have the waxy cuticle and the top layer is called the upper epidermis. 
and then it's the palisade mesophyll tissue which contains chloroplasts. Then we have the spongy mesophyll tissue which contains air spaces. At the bottom you may see guard cells and stomata and then the lower epidermis. We also have the vascular bundles which contain xylem and phloem. Finally, let's learn how different leaf structures are adapted for photosynthesis. They have chloroplasts that contain chlorophyll that absorb light energy for photosynthesis. The leaf's cuticle is waxy but thin, so it protects the leaf from water loss without blocking sunlight. In the lower epidermis, guard cells open and close the stomata to control and allow carbon dioxide to diffuse into the leaf and oxygen to diffuse out. The upper epidermis is thin and transparent so it allows more light to reach the palisade cells. The palisade mesophyll tissue layer is at the top of the leaf so the chloroplasts in the cells are able to absorb more light. The spongy mesophyll tissue has air spaces which allow carbon dioxide to easily diffuse through the leaf. And the vascular bundle consists of the xylem and the phloem. The xylem vessels bring water and minerals to the leaf and the phloem vessels transport sugar and amino acids away from the leaf to the rest of the plant. So that concludes topic 6, plant nutrition. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more biology revision videos. Bye bye.